right. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, let's go through solving three variables. So I'll say it again to you. When solving three variables, our main objective is to get it down to two equations with two variables. All right? So what we want to do is we want to eliminate one of our variables. It doesn't matter which one you want to eliminate. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write them down as equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. And what I notice is the y in equation 1 is probably going to be the easiest for me to eliminate. The reason being is if I add equation 1 and equation 2 and I add equation 1 and equation 3, I don't have to multiply by any multiplier. Every single time, y plus negative y is always going to get me down to 0y. So it's pretty easy. I don't have to multiply by any multiplier. However, like let's say you wanted to eliminate the z, right? If you wanted to eliminate the z, you'd have to multiply equation 1 by 2 to add it to my second equation to get 0z. Does everybody see that? And to x, you'd have to multiply. If I wanted to get rid of the x, I would have to multiply by a negative 2 to, um, to add it to equation 1, and then multiply that same equation by a negative 3 to add it to the second equation. So that's a lot of extra work. You can do it. But I'm just trying to do the least amount of work as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the elimination method to add equation 1 and equation 3. And I'm going to do the same thing for um, equation 1 and equation 2. Wait, that's equation 1 and equation 2. Then I'm going to do the same thing for equation 1 and equation 3. Now, some of you might ask, well, Mr. McLogan, why do you not add equation, um, equation 2 and equation 3, right? Why don't I eliminate y between 2 and 3? Remember, what's our purpose for our first step? Our, first, our purpose of our first step is to do what? Create two equations that have two variables. Two variables. Yeah. If I add these two up, I'm going to get how many equations when I add them up? One, One equation, right? <laughs> and it's going to have how many variables? Two. And if I add these two up, how many equations am I going to get when I add them up? One equation with how many variables? Two. So then, my aunt, so then I'll already have two equations with two variables. You could eliminate two and three, but then that's just another equation. You don't need to use it. But you could do two and three, but this way, these are the two easiest to do. So add them up. You get 5x. That goes to zero, right? Plus, oh no. OK. This goes to plus z equals 4. And we label my resulting equation a. Then I move to the next one, add these up. I get 3x. That goes to 0. That goes to negative 2z equals 5. I call the second equation b. Do you guys see how now what I've done by eliminating my three variables, by adding two equations, all right, sometimes you have to add mul multiply by multiplier, sometimes you don't. But here, I've now created two equations with two variables. Now, you can solve two equations by two variables, either by elimination or by substitution, whichever one is easiest for you. I'll do elimination since uh, some of you guys asked me to do that before. So I have 5x plus z equals 4, and then b equals 3x minus 2z equals 5. Now remember, on the elimination technique, what we want to do is either add or subtract your um, equations. It's easiest to add the equations when you have a positive and negative coefficient for your variables. So I look at this, and do I have the same coefficient for either one of my variables? No. So the first thing I need to do is multiply by a multiplier that's going to produce the same um, coefficients. So you could multiply by 1 half to get this down to 1. Or I usually think it's easier just to multiply. If I multiply this whole top equation by 2, what will be the coefficient of z? 2. And then I already have a negative 2z down here, so that's exactly what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by 2. So then I get, so now my new a is 10x plus 2z equals 8. And my b, I didn't do anything to my b, right? So it just remains the same. 3x minus 2z equals 5. Right? So does everybody see? All I did was I multiplied the top equation. Now, do I have the same coefficient for one of my variables? And is one positive, one negative? 
Yeah, since one's positive and one's negative, I'm going to add them. If they were both positive or both negative, you would subtract the equations. But since one's positive and one's negative, I'm just going to add them up. 10x plus 3x is 13x. That now goes to 0. That's why we want them to be the same. And then this goes to 13. Solving for x, I divide by 13. x equals 1. Now I know the value of x. To find the value of 1, or sorry, to find the value of z, you plug it into one of those equations, right? So you could say 5 times 1 plus z equals 4. Yes? Yes, because these are your own two. Yeah. Because if you plugged it into one of these, you don't know what y is yet. So you can't plug it in yet. But you, so you plug it into one of these two. So therefore, you get 5 plus z equals 4. Subtract 5. z equals negative 1. So now you know what x is. Now you know what z is. Now you plug it into one of our top equations. And it doesn't matter which one. However, if you're trying to solve for y, I believe it's always easiest to solve for the one that doesn't have a negative number in front. All right? Because that, you know, you just want to solve for the one that's by itself. Yes. Can you plug it into like the 10x plus 2z? 10x plus 2z. Well, yeah, but remember we're trying to find y. So we don't have a y. Yeah, you could yes, yeah, so you, when you're trying to find z, you could plug it into either one of those equations. Oh. It wouldn't matter. So I'm going to plug it into the top one. So we have 2 times 1 plus y minus negative 1 equals 5. Make sure, guys, when you plug it in, you put it in parentheses. That's minus a negative 1. Okay? It's minus z. Z is negative 1. It's minus a negative 1. Okay? Just leave it on your desk so I'll go and grab it. So therefore, you have 2 plus y plus um, 1 equals 5. That becomes y plus 3 equals 5. Therefore, minus 3 minus 3, y equals 2. That's a telephone. Everybody got that? So therefore, your solution now is z equals or is y equals 2. Any questions? Last question on that? It's a process, guys. It's very common to make a lot of mistakes. You guys got to be very diligent about all your work and always go back and double check because there's a lot of different stuff going on. Yes? I'm going to go over those next. Any other questions on this? No? Nope? OK. Did I help you out with elimination, too? Yeah. Remember how to do elimination? OK.